Hey guys, this is Comic You Know and Comic Frontline, and today I'm doing Comic You Know episode 145, and this is a show where I review all the comics I've read this week in one show, and uh, so let's get started. I have about 20 books this week, it's a pretty average week, uh, and uh, we go worst big of the week to best big of the week. So what was number 20? What was worst big of the week? And that was The Punisher, issue 1. Uh, so... I will say I'm not a huge Punisher fan, but because of Daredevil Season 2, I like this character there. I'm like, let me give this comic a try. And I did, and honestly, there wasn't a lot of Punisher in this issue. You didn't really get in his head. It, nothing really happened. He just shot some people, and it's mostly in the point of view of the DEA. Uh, so, it was, it was kind of this generic kind of drug lord story, and I was disappointed with that. Um, also, artwork um, was pretty good, but some of the facial expressions I thought could have been a little better, especially with um, Frank Castle himself. Uh, let me get there. Kind of has this weird, really short haircut. I want to get a good page, but I guess I'll just show you this. Uh, so this is a page of Frank Castle. But yeah, not a lot of Frank Castle in this issue, so it kind of felt a little generic to me. So it didn't hook me to get issue two. So I gave the Punisher issue one, uh, two stars, and that's number 20. Moving on to number 19, which is Invincible Iron Man issue 9, The Road to Civil War 2, which is not really The Road to Civil War 2 because there's no road here. <laughs> um, I don't know, it didn't really seem like they were building up to Civil War 2 in this story. It kind of just felt like the same story they've been doing. Also, this issue is supposed to be the Mary Jane issue where she's like in the Iron Man suit, so I was a little upset about that. Uh, but I will say the issue opens up in an interesting way where we get to see, um, or actually I'll say after the first scene, it opens up with uh, the girl building her own Iron Man suit. I thought that was probably the most interesting part of the issue. Uh, and then you go into Tony being missing and War Machine trying to go find him. And then you find out that he's just in disguise and looking like... Um, James Franco. <laughs> so that was the end. And it looks like that Mary Jane issue, I guess, will be in the next issue. Um, but I'm still really not a fan of this dark, dark artwork. Um, you know, example is, you know, the, the page I just showed you, very dark, hard to, uh, to see the details of of the story, and then sometimes it's really red in the background, and that I feel like clashes a bit. So I'm not a big fan of the art, this art style. I want to go back to Dave Marquez's art. Thought that was gorgeous. Um, yeah, Invincible Iron Man issue 9 gets two stars for me, and that is number 19. We are moving on to number 18, which is Green Lantern issue 52, which is the last issue of Green Lantern until DC Rebirth, and uh, I, I haven't really been into this storyline. I loved it when Hal was on Earth, that's why I kind of kept continuing to read this arc, but then once he went to the other aliens, and and this was mostly a talking, punching issue, uh, I didn't really quite care about it. And then it looked like his gauntlet kind of took over, and he's like pure willpower now, <laughs> pure energy. Um, I thought it was a little weird, but it took a while to get to that point also. Artwork is good though, enjoyed the art. Um, I gave it two and a half stars. It wasn't really my thing, still not exactly into this story of Hal, but hopefully in the Hal Jordan plus the Green Lantern Corps book coming out, um, I'll like that better. If not, I'll probably drop it, because it is written by the same person. It is, um, Vendetti, or, that's not how you pronounce his last name. Vendetti? Ven Vendetti? I don't know. <laughs> um, I always, uh, pronounce it Vendetti. Uh, alright, so moving on to number 17, and, uh, this is not you know, worst pick. Usually it is, but uh, Green Arrow issue 52. Still not great, still not worth picking up, still continuing this whole uh, werewolf story, but I, I like the artwork for the most part. I think it fits the tone of the book, but it continues this werewolf, I need, you know, blood type story. It actually opens up with uh, Ollie saying, I'm AB plus, and and that means I, I'm, I'm selfish. I have a selfish type of blood. <laughs> uh, and then it continues of his fight between Deathstroke. And again, it, it continues this whole werewolf weird story. And, and by the end, thank God, the werewolf story. They, they can't, it looks like the werewolves are uh, diverging. They're, they're not going to be in the next story. Let's hope. The next story is going to be the DC Rebirth story. So uh, as you know, I was not a big fan of this... Um, is, uh, this... Uh, I guess, ver I don't want to say volume, but, but this version of Green Arrow, uh, this half of it, this creative team, 
Uh, so Green Arrow issue 52 gets two and a half stars and we'll see, because it is the same writer, uh, what happens with the DC Rebirth book. But I will definitely pick it up. Alright, so now we're moving on to number 16, which is Spider-Man 2099 issue 10. Uh, I really usually like this book a lot. It's normally near my top five or in my top five. Um, but this issue, I felt, was a bit fillerish. Uh, it's the dealing of, you know, Miguel still feeling for what, you know, still dealing with um, Tempest maybe being alive, maybe not being alive. Um, her possibilities of being inhuman or having some sort of power. Uh, the best part of this issue definitely is him dealing with, uh, again, Tempest, Tempest's mother. Uh, and also his supporting cast, seeing more of um, his co-workers. I like that. But then once it got to, went towards the end and they, he had to go into this lab and then he ends up in 2099 and has his own Sinister Six, uh, Sinister Six version, that's when uh, I kind of dropped off and, and didn't care about the issue as much. So I gave it three stars. Uh, it, it, also the artwork is kind of shiny is the best way to put it. It kind of has weird glares. Uh, but I don't, I wasn't a particular fan of the cliffhanger, but we will see. I am excited to see more Tempest and the supporting cast, like I said, though. So I gave that three stars, and that was number 16, I think. Yes, yeah, so we are now up to number 15, which is The Amazing Spider-Man in Silk, Issue 3, The Spider-Fly Effect. Very long title. Uh, I like the story for the most part. I'm not saying you have to read it. It's not a must-read book, but if you like these characters, it's a fun read. I uh, still feel like the artwork's a bit off. It feels like it's not completely rendered co correctly because it is a digital book. It definitely fits more for a digital format than a printed format. kind of wish that they um, adapted, it, adapted it a little bit better. But this issue, it's finding out... Um, you know, about destiny and fate, and, uh, and they actually encounter their past selves when they're about to be bitten by the spider, and it looks like they're not bitten by the spider, so what's that all about? They learn more about the Rex character and who exactly that character is, um, and how it's connected to Hydra, uh, and that's pretty much it. You know, it's a fun story. I, I don't know if it still makes sense about them not getting their abilities, what's that gonna mean for the future selves, you know, going into the time travel stuff. Uh, but like I said, I give uh, Amazing Spider-Man and Silk, I'm not going to say the whole thing, um, three stars. It, it's a fun book if you like these two characters, but probably not a must read. Alright, so that's number 15. Moving on to number 14, a book I'm probably deciding to drop now. Not that it's bad, it's just it's too much in mythology and, you know, you never know if you're going to get a good story or a bad story. But this is Tales of Terror Volume 2, Issue uh, 7, which wasn't bad. It was a cool story. Um, it's about this wife who is a murderer and kills her husband. I feel like a lot of the Tales of Terror books are like that. Uh, but... You know, I, I won't say there's a lot of build-up to the mystery, because I think you had a feeling that someone that was with the wife, because especially with past Tales of Terror stories. But the artwork was really well done, and uh, it was an interesting story. I, I gave it three stars. It's hard to recommend the Tales of, uh, t uh, Tales of Terror stories, though, because um, they are only one-shots, and there are a lot of other books that come out. But if you're a fan of horror franchise get this uh, for me. I've uh, read the first volume and now the second volume and I think I'm a little bit Tales of Terror out with the, the anthology uh, format. Alright, moving on to number 13, which is Poe Dameron, uh, Star Wars Issue 2, uh, which is, you know, it's a, it's a good book. I love the artwork. I'm gonna just say that. Artwork is so gorgeous. Love the facial expressions. But the story doesn't really progress that much. It's more about the First Order, their point of view, which was interesting, I guess. But there's not a lot of Poe Dameron in this issue, which you expect. And I wanted more of him. wanted more of an interesting plot. It's kind of a hard hook. It's more of like, here's a missing episode that you don't quite need <laughs> unless you love Poe Dameron. Uh, so I hope we could get, kind of get out of that phase and get in its own type of story arc where you are hooked to, to read the next issue for story-wise and not just artwork-wise. So Poe Dameron issue 2 gets uh, 3 stars for me. And that was, I'm pretty sure, number 13. It was. So number 12 is... Vampirella issue 3. Now this is a little lower than it usually is. I've been really enjoying Vampirella. Uh, but mostly the story is learning about the villain a little bit more. I will say the artwork is a little bit thin line. Kind of wish it had a little bit darker line work. 
But uh, it's a cool story, and it's Vampirella learning a little bit more about her publicist, and uh, and that's it. It's it's more of an information issue. It's not a, you know big reveal like uh, the past two issues have been about. Um, so I guess that's why it's a little lower, but still definitely an issue worth picking up. And uh, so far, I'm really enjoying the the volume of Vampirella. So I give it three stars. So that was number twelve. Moving on to number eleven, which is. Empress issue two, uh, a book that I really like the concept for. It's a little slow so far, but uh, this issue, it's still them escaping, you know, learning a little bit about their personalities, uh, more the daughter who has this warrior personality, the, the son who has a more of engineer type um, personality, that's his, his trait. Uh, and it's, again, it's still them running away, though. It's not much of a uh, plot progression here, but it's still gorgeous artwork. And, um, yeah, definitely gorgeous artwork. Like, kind of see more of the world. Uh, and it had an interesting cliffhanger with the baby almost dying. So hopefully the baby doesn't die in the end. Uh, but hopefully we could get to see a little bit more plot progression and even more character work. Like, there's interesting personalities, but I want to really feel a lot of the interesting character scenes here. So Empress issue 2 gets uh, three and a half stars. Still a fun book though. Alright, so now we're moving on to I think number 10. Yes. And number 10 is Black Widow issue 3. Now Black Widow is an interesting series because it's not really a talky series. It's very silent most of the time. You don't really get to hear Black Widow talk. It's not very much about her inner monologue, but that's what's interesting about it. It really goes with the espionage feel of, you know, seeing the interesting ways that Black Widow kind of gets out of situations. And you learn a little bit more about her past and that's most of the issue. You know, seeing these flashbacks of her past, she gets stabbed in the end. That was a big cliffhanger. And the artwork's really gorgeous gorgeous and works for this kind of silent type, um, really reading more of uh, the physical aspect than the mental aspect. And I, and I think that really works for a book like Black Widow, but also it makes it a little slow. It's a bit slower of story pace, but it is an interesting espionage book. So I get Black Widow issue three, three and a half stars, and that is number ten. Moving on to number nine, which this book's a little lower than it was uh, the first week it came out. But uh, Bloodlines, issue two, still a really interesting book. Um, it, it's a little slower, this issue, but we get to explore a little bit of the powers of all our characters. Um, we have our main character, who is crippled, who the blue monster is starting to come out, and he doesn't really know what this is all about. He's also dealing with grief of his, uh, his best friend dying. We have this other girl who's just like this blogger who has his electrical powers. We don't really learn a lot about her, though. We just know that she went to school with... Um, with the, the kid who died uh, in our main character. And then we also have the, the girlfriend of that police officer who's dealing with these spikes coming out of her, her body and not knowing that's about. And uh, the police officer, I want to try to find him, the police officer has these fire abilities. And then this girl who seems a little bit more evil, um, being able to make constructs. Uh, and she's a little selfish. She wants this uh, easy bake oven, kind of stealing it from people. So I'm curious to see if she'll be a hero or not. But she's a little bit on the selfish side. Uh, and that's uh, pretty much the issue, kind of finding out more about um, about these characters' abilities. One thing I also really like about the book is how large the lettering is. Uh, I, I enjoy the aspect. I, I don't know why that's something that really pops out to me, but I like that's a little bit larger. It makes it feel a bit different. So... I give this issue three and a half stars. It's a cool issue to kind of explore powers, but it's not, um, I guess, as uh, plot progression or progression um, as the as the first issue. Uh, but I'm still excited to see where this miniseries goes. Really um, enjoying it so far. So Bloodlines issue two gets three and a half stars, and uh, I think that's number nine. Moving on to number eight, which is. Injustice Gods Among Us, uh, Year 5, Issue 9, which the artwork changed a little bit. It looked a little more crumbled. Still very good detail, but usually there's extremely good detail in this book. So it kind of looked a little smaller, uh, darker lines, but still good artwork um, overall. And this issue is about um, Zaro trying to make a friend, and he doesn't. He actually ends up killing his friend uh, by accident. That's mostly, that's mostly the issue of Bizarro's kind of mind frame. And then uh, Superman hunting Bizarro, but by the end, you know, Bizarro uh, goes to his father in a way and goes to Lex Luthor. 
uh, wanting him to save his friend. And we'll see if that's possible or not. Probably not, but, uh, it's cool to kind of go into Bizarro's mind, and it's a fun issue. This is the, these are the type of issues I want with the Justice Gods Among Us. I hate when it's always about Batman versus Superman, so it's like, we've seen that for five volumes already. Let's dig into these characters like Bizarro, or Harley Quinn, or whoever, you know, with Shazam. Uh, so Justice Gods Among Us, uh, Year 5, Issue 9, gets three and a half stars, a really fun issue, and if you're a fan of Bizarro, I recommend the issue. It's a very cool one-shot type story. Moving on to, I'm sorry, <coughs> moving on to number seven. Um, a book I'm really surprised with, Miss Fury. I know nothing about this character, but I'm really enjoying this series. Uh, my only negative is some of the paneling is, it's very, it has a lot of white space, so when you're reading it, just, I guess, warning for that, because, I mean, most modern comics, so you don't have that much white space, but I think it's going for, like, the old style of comics, where you have this kind of, um, I, this type of paddling, I would say. But, uh, something I really enjoyed is that we get to learn a lot more about our main character, um, her attitude, her personality, she's trying to figure out this mystery, uh, and, and she's trying to use one of her best friends to, to figure out the mystery also, and it looks like it's connected to whatever ability she has, and that's interesting for me, because again, I know nothing about this character or anything about her abilities, so we're seeing these flashbacks, that's interesting, and by the end, love the cliffhanger, she goes to her friend and says, hey, I need help, and her friend doesn't know that she's like this superhero, uh, or whatever, she's trying to be vigilante, and she's all messed up, and, and she says, uh, you know what, Edie? I think I'll borrow one of your dresses after all. So she's going to a ball. I love that. So it's, it's fun. Uh, it's a really fun series, and I'm having a blast with it. So Miss Fury, issue two, right, issue two, uh, gets three and a half stars. Again, artwork is a little thin line, uh, you know, a lot of white space, but still a really interesting story. Uh, and excited to read issue three. All right, so now I am moving on to number six, which is... A Force, issue five. Uh, this book, you know, it's it changed creative teams. I was a little worried about that, uh, but I still like it. I really like the artwork. Um, I know it's different, but I think it fits the tone of the book. Uh, it's a little puffier, uh, but it's still, you know, something I was worried about. It would take away the chemistry of these characters, uh, which I feel like is the most important part of the book, and it doesn't. It doesn't take away the chemistry. Uh, we get to really see the chemistry actually shine in this issue, and we see introduction of... Thor Dazzler. <laughs> and Dazzler Dazzler, our regular Dazzler is like, what's going on? Doesn't even want to talk to her. But by the end, it actually reveals to her that she's dying because of Terrigen Mist. And that's interesting because the we don't really get to see many mutants dying from the Terrigen Mist. There's always a mention of it, but never uh, an actual mutant we know that's dying from it. But now we see Dazzler being affected and, uh, and not telling her friends about it. And, and I think having a different view on life because of it. So I, I think that's a really interesting aspect and I'm excited to see where it goes. And I really liked her friendship between Thor, Dazzler, her own self, and, and Dazzler. And it was interesting to bring Thor, Dazzler into the story, bring an aspect of the Secret Wars book into uh, the new, all new, all different A-Force. Now, one negative I did have of the issue was the ending with Nico. I thought it was a little weird that she's, like, being controlled by what looks like an evil self of her. I don't know. From the artwork, it looked like her own self. Uh, but I thought that kind of came out of left field, so... The last few pages were a little weird, but the rest of the story was well done, and like I said, I'm glad that the chemistry was there for everybody. So, three and a half stars for me, and that is number six. Moving on to number five, which is The Violent, issue four. If you're not reading The Violent, this is one of my favorite indie books, one of my favorite books coming out. Uh, it's so good, because you get to see this guy who's made some mistakes. Uh, in this issue, he killed his best friend. But what's interesting is not him being this total villain. You kind of understand how he got to that path. Not saying it was the right thing to do at, in any means, but you understood how he got down this rabbit hole. Uh, and then you see his wife who finds out about the friend being, um, oh no, I'm sorry, uh, about the drug dealer being murdered, who we also killed, and says, oh, you know, I didn't think it was you, but why are you being so paranoid? So now it's him keeping the secret from the wife who just got out of the hospital for overdose and, and trying to get their kid back. 
Uh, so a lot of great emotion here. I will say it's a little bit slower than the other issues, but still really well done. And uh, we're, we're getting on the, the aftermath of him killing all these people and will he get caught. So uh, it's a really interesting, different book um, where you get into these characters' heads that aren't, you know, the perfect hero. They are... Um, have their problems and, and and now you're seeing them really dig deep or, or go going down this this rabbit hole like i said so the violent issue four uh gets four stars and that is number five now we're moving on to number four which is revival issue 39 now i usually get this uh physical but my sword didn't have it you know i love revival uh, now this issue, I will also say it's a little bit on the slower side, um, but there's some interesting character stuff that happens. Um, because we get to see Dana and, um, why can't I think of his name, uh, Derek. Dana and Derek uh, may be getting back together, I thought that was interesting, took about 39 issues. Uh, so they might be getting back together. And Nikki realizing that, uh, Nikki is the current girlfriend of Derek, realizing that he might be helping Dana and, and screwing things up. And at this point, the police come and, and they find marijuana, a lot of marijuana, and it's figuring out, oh, well, who do we arrest? Who's is this? And Nikki, trying to help Cooper, because Cooper is going crazy, like, don't take my dad away, don't, go, don't take my dad, says it's hers. And, you know, one thing I've been loving about these last issues is Nikki, you know, a character that was just like, a stripper and and just like the other girl in a lot of ways in in the past 30 issues of this book but then you get into the story where you see that she wanted to be an astronaut and and you get to see her character a bit more and how she's so caring to cooper and and then you have this one moment where she's throwing away her life just for cooper and i, I thought that was such a great moment and again you do get to see more of dina and m and, and kind of those consequences but that was definitely the highlight of the book and I, I gave it four stars all right moving on to number three which is spider gwen issue eight um i thought this is another great edition of spider gwen um seeing first of all j jonah jameson uh dealing with silk being a villain and and realizing you know when you have hope in somebody and then being let down and Sydney being very confused because this is not me, she's saying, who is this person? And she realizes it's Cindy 65, and they actually get to meet Cindy 65 um, and actually have a fight with her. And we see the origins of Cindy and how that's not just connected to Cindy of 616, but also Gwen of Earth 65, how she got her abilities was because she's a lab rat pretty much of, um, or experiment of Cindy 65. And it looks like that Gwen might have her abilities taken away from her. And what's interesting is from the beginning of the issue, it's Gwen questioning, do I want to be Spider-Woman anymore? Um, it was, you know, it's fate that my friends are still alive and that I've had a good life. But look at Cindy, look at Jessica. And now it's fate taking away her abilities. And, and it, does she want to be Spider-Woman after this? A very similar story happened in Spider-Girl. But it's interesting to see how Gwen's going to deal with this. Now, I will say the ending with the pimp articles was a little confusing. Other than that, there's a lot of interesting character story for both Cindy and Gwen. Now, if you're looking for Jessica, she's not in this issue as much. But a uh, very solid story. I gave Spire Gwen issue 8 four stars. Alright, so now we're moving on to number 2. And that is... Nova issue seven. Um, Nova. I mean, I feel like more people should read be reading this book. I love Sam Alexander. Love his personality, and I think it really shined in this issue where we have the opening um, scene with um, him and his sister Caitlin. Caitlin screams, and obviously Sam gets right. You know, gets up. What's up? What's up, Caitlin? And Caitlin's scared that Sam's gonna leave her, and uh, Sam's like, no, that's never gonna happen. But it does happen because he finds out, uh, you know, things about his father. Sees the clone of uh, his father die. He's like, I have to find him. I have to, or you know, this is never gonna end. And he tells his mother, and the mother, you know, is accepting about it. Another aspect I love about this book is his relationship with his family, not just Caitlin, but his mother especially. So good throughout this whole, this volume, last volume, since the introduction of Sam Alexander. It's one of the best parts of the series. And then you see the mother says, I can't lose you, so please be safe. And uh, it looks like next issue will be a Civil War II story. Love the artwork in this book, too. Really love the facial expressions here. Um, and even uh, seeing Sam's father and how similar he kind of looks to Sam, I thought that was kind of interesting. 
want to see if I could find an image. Just like all these clones you see, it's like, oh wow, he looks a lot like Sam. Uh, so that's just kudos on the art style. Um, so really enjoyed the art and uh, just the story. And, and like I said, one of my favorite parts is that family aspect. And you're really seeing that from Sam and seeing Sam step up. You know, he wants to be there for his family. But at the same time, he has to leave his family to go save their, their his father. Uh, so really well done issue. I gave Nova issue 7 4 stars and I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes. Alright, so what was number one? What was pick of the week? And that was The Amazing Spider-Man issue 12. Finally! Um, you know, I will say I haven't been loving this past volume, but it really picked up here with this new arc. Uh, you know, I explained it in detail. Uh, I did ha I did a written review on the Marvel Report and a review on my channel, so this is going to be a, a little bit more um, shortened version. But what I liked about it is seeing the supporting characters again. We have Mary Jane return in this issue, which is amazing. Uh, Harry, even though he's been in past issues, I feel like every issue he shows up in, I just automatically love. <laughs> um, because it is that grounded element. Uh, we have Liz, you know, going into this villainous path. Iron Man, Pepper Potts, uh... Betty, uh, we get so many people in this issue, uh, and that's awesome, and I liked how it was Peter dealing with his feelings of Mary Jane, of course, Harry dealing with his own identity problems, Liz again becoming a villain, uh, and then Mary Jane revealing to Peter, hey, I'm working for Tony Stark now, which is uh, definitely a moment I've been waiting for. But, you know, something I ha you know, I have in mind that Peter is this big business person. I don't really care for that aspect. But I feel with a lot of the past uh, story arcs, it's taken away that friendly neighborhood Spider-Man aspect, the supporting cast. And I think adding the supporting cast, having this battle or this team up between Iron Man and Spider-Man, it brought back those feelings of the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Even if he is a businessman, he's still Peter Parker. And, and I like that aspect of this issue. Even some callbacks to previous storylines like Regent coming back. Really interested to see what that means for Mary Jane and Peter. He was the villain from Renew Your Vows. Uh, you have even, uh, you know, uh, uh, ideas from before One More Day, what it actually, you know, some of the previous, like, what happened during Mary Jane and Peter's marriage when they weren't actually married, post One More Day, what did that actually look like, why does Tony not know that Peter is Spider-Man, really like that we got these answers here and, and kind of those things cleared up. So, Amazing Spider-Man, issue 12, a uh, really good improvement from the series. That is why it's my pick of the week, and I give this four stars. Best issue I read this week. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. This is Comic Gano. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Don't forget to like my Facebook page. Also, description below, there are links for my comic book, Like Father, Like Daughter. And don't forget to like the Facebook page of Like Father, Like Daughter. And, uh, yeah, let me know in the comments below what was your worst pick of the week, your best pick of the week, and everything in between. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.